You see this thing right here? This is what's going to give off the first impression for your YouTube channel. And remember, you only get one first impression. If someone sees this and it's not very professional looking, they're going to automatically associate your content with not being professional. It's just how it is. Today, I'm gonna to be teaching you how to create eye-catching channel art so that when someone does stumble upon your YouTube channel and they take a look at your banner, they're gonna instantly recognize the professionalism that your content provides. We're going to be going through everything such as text placement, backgrounds, social links, and more. Let's get into it. So the software we're going to be using today is Adobe Photoshop. I've mentioned this in my previous videos. It's just the best software out there for creating graphics. So when you first open up Photoshop, go ahead and click the create new button and you're going to want to copy the settings that I'm about to put in. So for the width, it's going to be 2560 and the height is going to be 1440. And you always want to make sure that this is checked on pixels right here. You can leave the rest of the settings the same. I'm actually going to change the resolution to 300 here just so we get a little bit better quality uh, and then you want to make sure that your background is on black instead of white and we'll get into why that is in a second but go ahead and click create and you always want to save your document before you start editing on it so that way Adobe Photoshop auto saves and in case your program crashes maybe you lose power in your house you have the recovered file to pull up back into Photoshop in case that stuff happens so go ahead and click the file and then save as button here and I'm just gonna save this as channel art template tutorial into my computer. And now in case Photoshop crashes, we have that backup. So once you have the document open, double click to create a layer as your background layer and just press okay on the background layer. Create a new layer above that. Go to the shape tool and if you don't have this selected, you can right click and then go to the rectangle tool here. Click on your screen and then in these two little dialog boxes here, we're gonna go ahead and take a look at the banner specifications that Google has laid out for the safe area on your YouTube banner. As you probably can tell, this entire document isn't going to be your YouTube banner. YouTube banners are cropped inside of a 2560 by 1440 document. So we're gonna go ahead and go to Google Chrome here, which is my internet browser of choice. Support.google.com is gonna have the answer for the dimensions so go to the create or edit channel art page and then you can scroll down and click this YouTube banner template and size guidelines and as we can see the minimum safe area for text and logos is 1546 by 423 so we're gonna go back into Photoshop and put those exact dimensions in so 1546 by 423 press enter or just click OK and that is going to create a rectangle with those dimensions now it blends in with the background right now and that's okay we can go up to fill and then change that to white click the move tool here or by pressing V on your keyboard press control a on your keyboard and then click these two buttons at the top to align it perfectly with the center of our document I'm gonna hold alt on my keyboard to drag up above here pressing control T on my keyboard to bring up the transform tools and then I'm just gonna drag the sides to the edge here just like that then click the check mark box at the very top and pressing control R on our keyboards to bring up the rulers here. Very important to have that up. Uh, we're gonna drag some horizontal guides and have them snap. If we turn off this layer at the very top that we just made, we wanna make sure that the guides snap to the safe area here. So we're gonna drag two guides out here. We can zoom in, they should auto snap. If they don't auto snap, like for some reason they're not on my computer right now, you can just zoom in here and then just drag them to the edges of the rectangle that we just made. And I'm gonna turn this layer back on up top, drag that underneath the layer that we just made. And that is how you have the safe areas and the safe guides set up for your banner. Now the next step is to add a background into our channel art. Now personally, I'm going to use an image that the Valorant or Riot Games team has provided for the community. And to get that, I'll leave a link in the description down below but depending on what your channel is actually about, you wanna change the banner to fit those specifications. For example, if you post a bunch of travel vlogs or you're a production channel, 
channel, maybe you want to include your face or you maybe want to include the main purpose of your channel in that banner. So hypothetically, I'm going to create this banner as if we were a gaming commentating channel here on YouTube. Okay, so I have my background open up in another document here. I'm going to use the move tool to drag that into my channel art layer. I'm going to hide it for a quick second. Now I'm actually going to create another layer above these two and I'm actually going to merge these by holding shift, right clicking and then going to merge shapes. Double click on the layer that we just merged together, the shape layer, go to gradient overlay and here is where you can really change the style and color of your channel. Personally, I'm going to opt for a dark blue. You can copy the hex color codes on screen right now if you want to get the exact same colors as I have, uh, but just click OK and I'm going to change the angle a little bit so that it's more I don't know, top facing maybe, changing the scale here so it blends a little bit better. It really is up to you on how you wanna play around with this, but personally, I'm just gonna leave it like that. Click OK, and now we have our gradient for our background. I'm gonna put this layer back to visibility here at the top. I'm gonna to double click, and I'm gonna go and change the blend mode to something like multiply. And that is going to add the darker parts of the image to the background, and it's gonna get rid of that red color as we see. But again, depending on what type of background you want to use for your channel art this is going to vary a ton this is just something I like to do when I add my backgrounds from like Google images or something into my banners so go ahead and add that blending mode I'm gonna press Control T on my keyboard again to resize it maybe making it a little bit smaller so it fits a little bit more uh, with the with the actual channel here just play around with it nothing's going to be certain hundred percent of the time Maybe doing something like this, maybe making it a little bit bigger here at the corners. All right, I think that looks pretty good. And then I think I'm going to go to my eraser tool and remove this centerpiece right here on the background because we want to put text there. And that's going to be really distracting if we have that in the background. So just click the erase here in the general area. And I'm actually going to redo that. And I'm going to increase my brush size using my bracket keys to give it more of a, of a gradient feel. All right, so now we have that erased. We're gonna go to a new layer here at the bottom and I'm gonna change my color to maybe like a teal or a cyan almost. I don't know, something like this looks really interesting. I'm gonna go back to my brush tool here. I'm gonna go around the edges, increasing my bracket key to make it a little bit larger, going around the edges, making sure my hardness is at zero. By the way, always make sure your hardness is at zero when you're adding lighting and shadows, but going around the edges here and it's okay if it overlaps that's fine we're gonna add a clipping mask later going around the edges here just a little bit to add some nice bright light and then you can drag that underneath the background layer and you can go right click and then go ahead and create a clipping mask so that only affects the shape once you have that ready you want to right click and then go rasterize layer and then rasterize layer style and that way the clipping mask is only going to apply on the shape that we just rasterized and I'm gonna double click and change the opacity just a little bit so it's not coming on so strong, maybe down to around 60%. Okay, and now we're gonna go ahead and add some darker blues here because this is a lot lighter than I'd like it to be. So going to our color picker here and then going to the eyedropper tool, I'm gonna click a little blue area here on my document, going back to my brush tool, and then just kind of going over the area that we kind of colored in, making sure actually we create a clipping mask here, doing the same thing we did, but just going and you know covering this area, maybe changing the opacity down to something like, I don't know, 65%, and then erasing around the areas that our main subject is in, decreasing the bracket key size, there we go, I like that a lot better than what we had. All right, so now we have more lighting and shadows. I'm gonna create another layer above that stuff that we just made, and now we're gonna create some text on top of our background. So go to the text tool here at the bottom, choose a font that you like personally, I think I'm gonna go something with maybe like an industry feel. I'm gonna go change that to industry, change the color here at the top to white, and then change the setting here from bold to maybe something like Demi. And again, this is gonna be completely up to you what type of font you wanna use. I'll leave a link in the description of this video to the font that I'm using. It is an Adobe Typekit font, which means you have to pay for it. It's not an affiliate link, but if you do want to use it legally, technically speaking, you can go ahead and pick that up. I'm gonna double click on my link layer here and then I go ahead and add my text. So I'm going to say maybe my channel. 
There we go. My channel. Actually, I'm going to change this back to bold. I don't think Demi is a good fit, so maybe we'll change that back to bold. Click the check mark box. Go back to our move tool, press control A on our keyboard, and then click these two buttons at the top again to center it. Press control T on our keyboard, holding alt, drag the corners to make sure that it's centered. And now we have our regular text on our document. It's time to add some socials and effects around this. So the first thing I'm going to do is go back to our rectangle tool here at the bottom, create a box around the my channel here. That will create a new layer above this part right here. We're gonna right click and then go to rasterize layer. We're gonna go up to fill, change this to this little X here at the top, go to stroke, change it to white, and then bring down the pixel count here to maybe like 0.81. And that, if we zoom in, is gonna create a white box around our image. And I'm actually gonna bring the background behind this so that the red doesn't blend in with the white. I'm gonna right click and I'm gonna to go to rasterize layer style. I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna change the color overlay from white to that little cyan color that we had, uh, the cyan green turquoise color. I think that looks really interesting. Right click and then rasterize layer style. And then we're gonna double click to rename this box. I'm also going to rename all of this to what I want just so we stay organized. Now that we have our regular text box, I'm gonna create another layer above that. Zoom in here. Using my rectangular marquee tool, I'm gonna to create a box around the corner here, making sure it's even on all sides. Uh, something like that, maybe a little bit smaller. Again, you guys can play around with this if you want. Uh, what I do doesn't have to be perfect for your banner. It really is up to you. But now that we have a good size, I'm going to press Control Backspace on our keyboard, and that's going to fill it in with our background color. Double click to change a color overlay onto it, and then again, adding that same kind of cyan color, and that's going to create a nice effect on the edges of our box. Going to the Move tool, holding Alt on our keyboard to drag it to each corner over here and then adding them to the edges to, again, create a nice effect on it. Okay, so now we have our corners of our My Channel box connected. I'm gonna hold Shift, click the top layer, and then click the bottom layer, again holding Shift, right click, Merge Layers, and then we're gonna rename that to Corner Boxes. The next step is creating some darker shadows inside of the box itself. So going to the box here, going to the magic wand tool and then selecting the insides of the box, it's gonna create a selection inside. Go to a new layer here at the bottom, control backspace, and again, that's gonna fill it with the white color of our background. Double click and then change it to like a dark blue. So I'm gonna change it to like this maybe, dark blue here. And the text is actually behind this, but we'll change that in a second. So again, change this to like a dark blue click OK, right click, rasterize layer style. I'm gonna bring the My Channel layer all the way to the top so that it is above everything else. I'm gonna double click on the layer that we just made and then change the opacity to something like 63%. That looks okay and it's gonna separate the My Channel text from the background a little bit more. I'm gonna rename this layer here to My Channel Dark Box and now we need to create some social links underneath the My Channel text. To do this, we're gonna create a new layer above the My Channel, go to the text tool, and then just add your socials. So say your Twitter is at Stinky Pig. I don't know, it's, I'm not gonna judge on it. <laughs> just go ahead and click the check mark box. Control T to uh, drag these down here, make it a little bit smaller. Click the check mark box, go back to the text tool. I'm actually gonna change this to, instead of being bold, I'm gonna change this to like medium or something like that. And that is the Twitter link. I'm gonna use the move tool, hold alt, drag to the right, holding shift, and then I'm gonna rename this one to something like, I don't know, slash stinky pig. And that might be your Instagram. Click the check mark box again, go back to the move tool, hold alt on a keyboard, holding shift as well, drag across. I'm gonna rename this one to maybe stinky pig beta. And that's the, that's the Discord link. I don't know, I'm just making this up. Obviously, use your own social links if you want. Now, we need to go to Google Images to pull these social links and put them inside of our document. I'll be right back after that's done.
Okay, so I've gone ahead and imported all of the social logos into our image and centered them properly with the text. And the next step is to make sure that the actual social links are centered with the entire document. So after that, we're gonna rename these to what they actually are. So this is Insta, this is Twitter, and then this is Discord. Holding shift, going to the very top layer and then going to the last social link, click, Control G to group them, and then I'm gonna rename this group layer to Socials. Control A on our keyboard, go back to the Move tool, and then again, press just that button at the top. Not this one, just this one, because we want to center it horizontally with the document, not vertically, but now we have the social images linked. I'm gonna actually open up the socials and change the Insta one to be more centered with the other ones, just because I see that it is not perfectly centered here. There we go and there are your social links. The last step is to make sure that we save the document correctly. So when you're finished with everything, go over to File, Export, and then Save for Web Legacy, and then making sure PNG24 is selected, the transparency box is selected, there's no metadata, and the file size is 2560 by 1440. Go ahead and click Save and find somewhere on your computer that you can save and find this very quickly from. And that is the tutorial. I hope you guys enjoyed, if you did, Make sure to drop a like rating on this video. It really does help out with the YouTube algorithm. And if you have any questions about the video, make sure you leave some comments down below. I'm happy to help you guys out with your designing adventures. Having really good looking channel art is going to go a long ways in showing that first impression to that new viewer that you mean business and your content is really high quality. With that being said, until next time guys, my name's Delvidge and I'm out. Peace.